Nowadays, Charles Darwin is recognised as the scientist most associated with the theory of evolution, but there were others whose ideas were later shunned. Darwin's theory of evolution had three main concepts. First, that variation occurred randomly among members of a species. Second, that an individual trait could be inherited. And lastly, that the struggle for existence would allow only those with favourable traits to survive. New evidence is revealing that life is not this simple, and that some of the older ideas also seem to have equal merit in trying to understand the process. Let's dive in and find out more. Jean-Baptiste Lamarck was a French scientist who developed an alternative theory before Charles Darwin. Overall, Lamarck's concept was limited in scope. He did not believe in extinction of species, but rather thought that species are gradually transformed into other species. He viewed that organisms had an innate tendency to progress towards perfection down the succession of generations. There are two important concepts in this model. The first, a characteristic which is used more and more by an organism, becomes bigger and stronger, and one that is not used eventually disappears. This would later be called inheritance of the acquired characteristic. Number two, any feature of an organism that is improved through use is passed on to its offspring. Darwin was well aware of Lamarck's work and generously acknowledged his contribution. His view of the inheritance of the acquired characteristic dramatically evolved over his lifetime. Initially, he felt it was only a very small component, but in later publications he viewed it as being more consequential. Even in Darwin's day, many scientists considered his giving in to Lamarckian inheritance a sign of weakness and a mistake. Over the centuries, the idea of Lamarckian inheritance became repulsive and unacceptable to most biologists. It is viewed as a derogatory phrase and is presented as a grave error in judgment. However, biologists are finding more and more examples of evolution scenarios that seem to blur the line between both concepts. Before we look at some examples, it is important to define the Lamarckian paradigm and the criteria an evolutionary process must satisfy to be considered Lamarckian. At its most basic level, we can describe the causal chain as environment, habit, form. Lamarck stated the following, whatever the environment may do, it does not work any direct modification whatever in the shape and organization of animals. But great alterations in the environment of animals leads to great alterations in their needs. And these alterations in their needs necessarily lead to other in their activities. Now, if the new needs become permanent, the animals then adopt new habits that last as long as the need that evoked them. So we could state the Lamarckian scheme as follows. Number one, environmental factors cause genomic changes. Number two, the induced changes are targeted to a specific gene. And number three, the induced changes provide adaptation to the original causative factor. By comparison, Darwin's route of evolution is that the environment is not the causative agency, but merely a selective force that may promote fixation of random changes that may cause adaptation. In this sense, the Darwinian scheme is simpler and less demanding compared to the Lamarckian one, in that no specialised mechanisms are required to direct the change to the relevant genome, restrict it to a specific mutation to provide the relevant adaptation. It is this complexity that makes conceiving and finding this mechanism of direct adaptation in genomes so difficult and has relegated it to a crackpot idea simply to be ignored. Antivirus immunity in prokaryotes. A recently discovered novel system of antiphage defense in archaea and bacteria seems to function via a straightforward Lamarckian mechanism. The system is known as CRISPR-Cas where CRISPR stands for Clustered, Regularly Interspaced, Short Palindromic Repeats, and CAS for CRISPR-associated genes. CRISPR is a way of finding a specific bit of DNA inside a cell and then editing it. CRISPR have been known about for over 20 years, even before the first bacterial genome was sequenced. It was discovered that some of the inserts in CRISPR cassettes 
are identical to fragments of bacteriophage. This led to the idea that the CRISPR-Cas system utilised the phage-derived sequences as guide molecules to destroy the phage mRNA. This is a Lamarckian system, an environmental cue is employed to directly modify the genome. The resulting modification directly affects the same cue that caused the modification. The modification is clearly adaptive and is inherited by the offspring of the cell that encountered the mobile element. Horizontal gene transfer. Prokaryotes readily obtain DNA from the environment. The absorbed DNA often integrates into the prokaryotic chromosomes and can be fixed in a population if the transferred genetic material confers even a slight selective advantage onto the recipient. The process of horizontal gene transfer has obvious Lamarckian aspects to it. DNA is acquired from the environment and if it infers an adaptive value, is passed on. A prime example of this behaviour is the evolution of antibiotic resistance. When a sensitive prokaryote enters an environment where an antibiotic is present, the only chance for the newcomer to survive is to acquire a resistance gene through horizontal gene transfer. This typically occurs via plasmid and is a clear case of Lamarckian inheritance. The recent comparative genomic studies indicate that horizontal gene transfer is the principal mode of a bacterial adaptation to the environment through the extension of metabolic and signal networks that integrate newly acquired genes and thereby incorporate new capabilities within pre-existing frameworks. Quantitatively, in prokaryotes, horizontal gene transfers appear to be a far more important route of adaptation than gene duplication. Stress-induced mutagenesis and activation of mobile elements. In the classic experiment, McClintock demonstrates activation of gene jumping in plants under stress and the importance of the stress-induced mobility of distinct control elements in the emergence of resistant phenotypes. An example of this is the mutagenic SOS repair pathway in E. coli. The adaptive character of error-prone DNA repair is supported by several strong lines of evidence. Mutations produced by error-prone repair processes, although not targeted to specific genes, are not randomly scattered in the genome either. They seem to cluster in functionally linked genes where beneficial mutations emerge while limiting the damage to other parts of the genome. Stress-induced mutagenesis is a rule amongst bacteria rather than an exception. Although this type of mechanism is not exactly Namarkian, as the stress does not cause mutations directly and specifically in genes conferring stress resistance. Instead, the organisms evolve mechanisms that in response to stress induce non-specific mutagenesis which seems to be fine-tuned so that it minimises the damage from alterations in those rare genomes that carry a beneficial mutation. This type of mechanism is triggered by environmental conditions. This leads to mutations which are adaptations to the stress factor. So in simple terms, if the environment changes, which in turn causes a stress to the bacteria, like a shortage of food or exposure to something harmful, the stress causes mutations in the bacteria, which can lead to the evolution of mutations which can help it overcome the stress factor and these are then passed on to its offspring. Non-random mutation in humans. A new study has brought the first evidence of non-random mutations in human genes, challenging a core assumption at the heart of the evolutionary theory by showing a long-term directional mutation response to environmental pressure. The team developed a method for identifying mutations that would arise out of the blue in their offspring without being inherited from either parent. They use this to examine the out-of-blue emergence of the human haemoglobin S mutation, which is probably the most well-known point mutation in biology. The mutation provides protection against malaria for people carrying one copy, but causes sickle cell anemia in those with two. Malaria has arguably been the strongest selection pressure acting on humans in the last 10,000 years. It often causes more than a million deaths per year in Africa in the recent past. It is often used as an example of random mutation and natural selection in evolution. The assumption being that it arose accidentally in an individual in sub-Saharan Africa 
and then spread inside Africa via natural selection, until its malaria protective benefits were balanced out by its sickle cell anemia costs. By examining the out of blue origination of the mutations, the scientists were able to disentangle whether malaria protective mutation arises randomly and spreads in Africa only because of selection pressure, or instead whether it could actually be occurring out of the blue more often in sub Saharan Africa who have been exposed to intense malaria and selection pressure for many generations. If mutation is random, then it should be equally likely to emerge in areas of high malaria versus areas of low malaria. The results of their analysis clearly demonstrate that the mutations exhibit a non-random pattern. The mutations appear out of the blue not only much faster than expected, but also much faster in the populations where it is of adaptive significance. These mutations all go to demonstrate that we need to move away from our traditional thinking on this topic. Neither Darwin nor Lamarck are entirely correct. The systems are far more complex and there seems to be an interplay between information that is stored in the genome and the environmental pressure. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.